grace and peace in the name of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Aaron Gurner of Christ Church in Floyd, New York, and you are watching Daily Bread, a daily Bible devotional to help us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Today is June 18th, and we will be looking at Proverbs chapter 18, and we'll also be continuing what we started yesterday in looking at friendship. So yesterday we looked at Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 17, how a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. We began looking at the story of Jonathan and David's friendship, their love for one another. And today we'll be looking at Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24, another proverb about friendship, which says, a man of too many friends comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Well, as we begin, let's ask for the Lord's blessing upon our time. Lord, we come before your throne of grace in the name of Jesus Christ with full confidence, Father, that you hear us because you have accepted your Son and his once for all sacrifice. So we thank you as we come in the new covenant in Jesus' name. Uh, we thank you that you have told us that whatever we ask for in prayer, that we are to believe that we have received it and it will be ours. And it is our prayer now that you would feed us from your word, that we would be growing in our love for those things that you love and our understanding of friendship. And I pray that you would cause us to rejoice more, uh, that you are a friend to us in the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that you would grant us now your spirit, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, yesterday we learned how friends are a kind of neighbor, and it's a fulfillment of the law. So as we think about the Proverbs, they're an application of the law of God. Remember Solomon, the author of the Proverbs, he is the great builder of the temple, the temple housing, of course, um, the, the law of God, but the temple being the source of God's compassion and grace. And the reason that God's people are brought to the temple in the first place is because of God's redemptive work. And so if we are to have the mind of Christ, as we think about friendship, we need to be fixing our eyes on Jesus. So in the old covenant, God's people would fix their eyes on the temple and the new covenant we're fixing our eyes on Jesus as we think about friendship. And again, friendship is an outworking of the law of God, is an outworking of the second great commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. And that's one of the great things about friendship. Friendship has to do with love. Um, it's it's self-love, so love your neighbor as yourself, but it's also a selfless love. Friends are those who share common interests, common loves, common passions, common desires that we do. C.S. Lewis in an essay on friendship wrote that a new friendship starts out like this. What? You too? I thought I was the only one. So you begin to learn about one another and, and the common things and hobbies that you share and enjoy. Close friends love the things that you love. Friends are one of the great blessings that God has given to us in life. And so again, as we think of the, the temple, as we think of Christ, and as we think of friendship, hopefully we're, we're turning our eyes with our friends on Jesus. And we are experiencing in friendship this kind of love Love for neighbor as you love yourself. Friendship is one of those great, wonderful uh, blessings of the Lord. And of course, when you turn to the temple, we learn that God is triune. So as we think about friendships uh, and companionship, God is not a lonely God. He is triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He created us in his image for relationships with himself and with others. So as Solomon spoke the Proverbs and Riddles about friendship, he certainly would have thought about David and Jonathan's friendship and love for one another. In fact, we learned yesterday in 1 Samuel chapter 18 how the soul of David's friend Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as himself. So love your neighbor as yourself. Jonathan loved David. He was a friend, a neighbor as himself. And he entered in verse 3 of 1 Samuel chapter 18 into a covenant. Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. 
So again, love your neighbor as yourself. So they loved one another so much that they covenanted with one another. And when Jonathan died, David lamented and recalled his love for Jonathan, saying, you have been very pleasant to me. Your love to me was more wonderful than the love of women. So this is one of the closest friendships in the Bible. And there's a lot we can learn about this friendship from it. Um, as Solomon is reflecting on friendship, think of Solomon and how he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Um, he had more wives and concubines than I have friends on Facebook. Solomon's 1,000 relationships, though, weren't meaningful with these women. None of them were closer friendships than David had experienced with Jonathan. So a friend loves at all times. A brother is born for adversity. A man of too many friends comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. The story of David and Jonathan's covenant friendship and love became a picture then of messianic friendship because David was God's anointed. He was the Messiah in the Old Testament. The Spirit of God rested upon him and in that, we learn about the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, David's greater son, Jesus, David's greater friend. And so even though Dave, Jonathan died at a young age, David never forgot their friendship. In fact, years later, and I, I mentioned yesterday how this is a story that, that goes across First and Second Samuel, in Second Samuel chapter 9, after Jonathan had died, David wants to show kindness to Jonathan. And the reason he wants to show kindness to Jonathan is because of the covenant that they had entered into. And so in 2 Samuel chapter 9, it is recorded that David said, remember this is after Jonathan had died, David said, is there yet anyone left of the house of, date of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba, and they called him to David. And the king said to him, Are you Ziba? And he said, I am your servant. The king said, Is there not yet anyone of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan who is crippled in both feet. So the king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. Then king David sent and brought him from the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodabar. Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David and fell on his face and prostrated himself. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he said, Here is your servant. David said to him, Do not fear, for I will surely show kindness to you for the sake of your father Jonathan, and I will restore to you all the land of your grandfather Saul, and you shall eat at my table regularly. Again he prostrated himself and said, What is your servant that you should regard a dead dog like me? Then Ziba said to the king, According to all that my lord the king commands, this servant, so your servant will do. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table as one of the king's sons. Isn't that amazing? Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, ate at David's table as one of the king's sons. This is why Solomon was one of the king's sons. Solomon would have known and eaten at the same table with Mephibosheth. Solomon never knew Jonathan, but he knew of David's covenant with Jonathan and love because they ate at the same table. So as Solomon writes about friendship, he most certainly has David and Jonathan in mind and Mephibosheth who sat at the king's table. So as we think about love and King David's kindness to Mephibosheth, we should learn not just about our friendships, but also God's friendship with us. Because David wants to show, and this is one of the things that he is doing when he brings Mephibosheth to his table. He wants to show to Mephibosheth the kindness of the Lord. 
So he, he wants to show the loving kindness of that the, of the Lord. So when David uses that word kindness in Second Samuel, um, it is um, in verse seven, do not fear for I will surely show kindness to you for the sake of your father, Jonathan, you shall eat at my table regularly. So in showing the kindness and the kindness of the Lord to Mephibosheth, we are learning about God's kindness his mercy, his grace, and his compassion to us. When God's people went to the tabernacle or the temple in the Old Testament, it was a place of feasting. God's people were eating at the king's table, the Lord. So the, the idea that there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother, that one who is that friend who sticks closer than a brother is the messianic king. So do you remember the night in which Jesus was betrayed in uh, the Gospel of John? And you remember in that night in which Jesus was betrayed, he revealed his messianic love and friendship for his people. So Jesus says in John chapter 15 in verses 12 through 14, this is my commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. Well, that's friendship. Love your neighbors yourself. So here's the eternal son of God who took upon himself flesh and blood the night in which he is betrayed. He said, this is my commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. Jesus has perfectly loved his friends, his neighbors. He says, greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. So there's the messianic king laying down his life for all who call upon his name. And Jesus said, you are my friends if you do what I command you. So remember how we began that friends share common passions and common loves, common interests. And so what Jesus the Christ does is that he is the giver of the Holy Spirit. So he has poured forth the Holy Spirit upon all flesh who gives us a new heart, a new love. And so we are his friends because of the work of the Holy Spirit, and because we share the same love, the same passions, the same interests in seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So as we conclude and apply these things to our lives, friends and friendships are one of the great blessings of life. They're something that God gives to us and we share our heart's desires with our friends. But we need to take care that our friendships are not leading us or others to turn their backs on God's friendship with us in Jesus Christ. So if you have friends who are, for example, not Christian, be careful that they're not turning your love and your interests away from God's law, his commandments, and his holiness. In fact, it should be the other way around so that you are to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so friends are an opportunity for us to witness to the Lord Jesus Christ. We also learn it through friendship in uh, Matthew's gospel about the Lord Jesus Christ. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say, behold, a gluttonous man and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom, there's Solomon, as we think about friendship, wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. So, so here is one of the accusations against our Lord Jesus. He ate, he went to the table of sinners, and he was accused according to the law for being a glutton and a drunkard. In other words, a disobedient son. But the, the, the fact of the matter is it's just the opposite. When you went to the temple in the old covenant, you are a sinner. And it was God's way of saying, God is a friend of sinners. It should not have been a surprise to anyone that God is a friend of sinners. Anytime you went to the temple, you were reminded God is my friend and he has made provision for sin. So Jesus' friendship with sinners was not because he was a friend of sin, just the opposite. Jesus, the Messianic King, is making those who are sinners, you and me, friends of God and his covenant. So it's an amazing thing that David was a friend to Jonathan and Mephibosheth, and David's greater son and friend is also a friend of sinners. David was a sinner. Jesus is a friend and a greater friend to David and Solomon. 
and he invites us to his covenant friendship and table. So in Revelation chapter 19, there's a wonderful invitation that I, I hope that you hear and that you have accepted, right? Blessed are those who say, uh, who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. So for all time in the new heavens and the new earth, you can eat at the table of the King. And it begins now. If you've been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, when you come to the Lord's table. And finally, we need to think about others when we are eating and drinking. Jesus taught in Luke's gospel, in Luke chapter 14, that when you give a reception, invite the poor, the crippled, the lined, the, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed since they do not have the means to repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. So as we think about those who share common interests with us in our friendship, uh, we in our friendship are to be reaching out like David did in his kindness to Jonathan's friend Mephibosheth. So please pray with me. Lord, we thank you that you, Jesus, are the friend who sticks closer than a brother. We thank you that this is why you have given your spirit. And we pray um, that you would help us to be growing in our common interests with you, Jesus. Help us to be growing in our love from the heart for your kingdom, Father. Help us to be growing in our love for doing your will and learning it. Help us to be growing in our love and our desire, our passion for holiness. Help us to be growing in our desire to be worshiping you in spirit and truth. And also, I pray that we be growing in our desire and for the evangelism and the law for the lost, but also for uh, throwing and inviting others to our table who are unable to repay us. And we marvel that you, Jesus, are such a king that you will repay as if you don't owe us anything, but you said you will repay us at the resurrection of the righteous. We thank you for these wonderful truths. And we thank you for these things in your name. Amen. We'll now be singing Psalm 22, the E selection. And here in Psalm 22 is a reminder of Jesus' love for us. So Psalm 22 begins with the death of Jesus. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, but it's so that the ends of the earth would be his friends and sit at his table. So please join with me as we sing Psalm 22, the E selection. Oh, 